So in this lecture, we're going to be learning about counterbalancing and random allocation. So what is counterbalancing? So basically, we use counterbalancing to overcome order effects in repeated measure design, as counterbalancing is a way to test whether the independent variable is actually causing the change in the DV. To make it easier, let me give you an example. In an experiment, the aim is to investigate the effect of two different types of music on concentration using repeated measure design. The participants are given a crossword search and they are made to listen to rock and classical music. So basically, the experimenters just want to see like which music helps you solve the crossword search faster. Let's say we have 30 participants in this experiment. The 30 participants are firstly listening to rock music while completing the word search and then later on, they are listening to classical music while completing the same word search. The results of this experiment tells us that the people who are listening to classical music complete their word search faster. Now a question arises that, was classical music really the main factor that improved concentration? Or did the participants perform better in condition 2 because they already learned how to do crosswords better from doing them in the first condition? Now to counter these problems that could arise, we are gonna use counterbalancing. So how does one use counterbalancing? So in this experiment, we have 30 participants. We are going to divide these participants into two groups. The first group of 15 participants will listen to rock music followed by the classical music while solving the crossword search. The 15 participants of group 2 will do the opposite of group 1. Each participant does classical music followed by the rock when solving the crossword search. Doing this allows us to see if one condition is always better for concentration or another. So, uh, in summary, counterbalancing is the half of the participants experiencing conditions in order of A and then B, and the other half experiencing conditions as B and then A. Now, we're gonna be talking about random allocation. The reason we allocate participants into groups um, is because we want to reduce confounding variables, such as individual differences. So, um, random allocation is when the researcher divides the participants and allocates or distributes them to certain groups using a random method. An example of this random method can be that there are 30 participants and each participant is given a number from 1 to 30. And we use a random number generator and assign each participant to a specific group. So they are going to be randomized and they will be randomized in no predictable order.